Power Five schools behind you, and then Delaware State, which we clearly outmatched. We've got nine games left looking ahead. Just where do you see the team? Uh, you know, I, I like where we're at. You know, we're, we're healthy, fairly healthy. Um, you know, we improved this weekend, obviously. Um, I thought a lot of a lot of people got to play, you know, but we we did the things we needed to do, and and we're we're looking forward to Georgia State. You know, they're they're a talented team. They're a very talent wise even team to us, um, which I think next the next nine are that way. You know, could go either way. So uh, so I feel good. I feel like uh, we did what we should have done on Saturday. And if we came out and played well, uh, I thought we could we could run away with it, and we did. And um, and now we're gonna we're gonna get challenged a lot more, and um, and we're ready for that challenge. Coach, um, in one of the pregame conversations, I heard you, you talked about the uh, return game and how you thought we might break one <laughs> on Saturday night. Uh, Did you expect us to break three? And Georgia State's punter leads the nation in punting the fifty. That might work against them, however. Yeah, you can't outkick your coverage. That's that's an issue. Um, we knew going into this game we had a shot of returning met multiple. Um, they they ran an old school tight punt, and and in the old school tight punt they had a lot of offense and defensive linemen covering, which is what, which I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, so we we decided that we doubled our gunners, we doubled their gunners, knowing that the the big. 280 pounders weren't going to be able to touch Bird anyway, you know, and uh, it was a great plan. You know, we knew we weren't going to get him some space in front of him. We didn't know he was going to drop it first, you know, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, Coach Coach Wright did a great job preparing. We knew it was there. We just had to take advantage of it. We talked about it before the game: is we have to make a big play on special teams, and uh, we ended up making four. One got called back, but uh, two returns, and then. We had a, a on a, on par punt team. We caused a fumble, or they dropped it. We recovered it, and uh, so it gave them confidence. I think I, I like the way our kickoff team ran down. Uh, Josh Grant kick, kicked off great. I mean, it, he was right where we want him to be. He had a lot. He had a lot of kicks, you know, and uh, so yeah. So I think it was just confidence is a big deal, you know, and um, and I think a lot of I think our our special teams units gained a lot of confidence this week. They took the field. For 60 minutes, excited, you know. Even when Tyron went in there, uh, well, they were pretty fired up about opportunity to go score, and it, it felt a little bit, you know, when Darius was back there, people were pretty fired up. You know, the whole team was fired up. You know, when he got to go back there, and I, we're starting to get that back. You know, that's hard to it's hard to have. Pretty cool that he was there. Yes, it was really unique that he was on the sideline. They played on Thursday night, so he got to be there, and um, he was. I'm sure he enjoyed that part. You know. Remind him of himself, probably. Last week, uh, Eskridge, Hayward, and uh, Jen Wright uh, all held out uh, for various reasons. All different injuries. Yeah. Uh, do you expect them to all come back this week? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they all practice today. You know, they're all back already. And, and um, you know, Trey was the, really the closest one. You know, um, he got dinged up on Wednesday or Thursday, you know. Um, so yeah, they were all really close. Is it you know kind of like uh, Kenoy last year, you know, when on the Wagner game is uh, he was on kind of half a leg against Michigan State, and it really so I didn't let him play against Wagner, although I wanted to, you know. But um, so yeah, they all they're all there today, and and um, you know worked out good. Other people got more reps, which we needed. Jalen Hall needed to get more reps, and he did, and um, and I think he's going to continue to get better as well, you know. Gio uh, Ricci, you know, you wanted to get him more involved in the passing game, and clearly you did. Um, can you talk about, um, you know, where you feel like the passing game is at right now? I feel pretty good. I mean, a lot, lot of our, the way they were playing, they were giving us things underneath. Um, we had a couple ways that we could have got behind them, you know, once the score got out of hand and we didn't, we just kept throwing hitches in front of them. You know, I thought we were pretty efficient throwing the ball. Um, we have a, we can still get better, but uh, I think we're 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 doing a good job. The kids understand what we're trying to get out of it. A uh, couple nice throws, John. You know they're starting to understand the system we, that we run. 
and what I want and where where before the snap John knows where he's going the receiver knows he's getting it everyone knows on our side where the ball's going Gio on his touch second touchdown he knew he was getting the ball they gave us the coverage we wanted he knew it he wrapped the linebacker really hard because he knew John was going to John kept the Mike linebacker you know out of there and then came back and just threw a strike right on him and he broke a tackle and got in and that's when you you know you that's when you know you're starting to get it. When they, when the receivers are reading coverage, they know what John's thinking. John knows what they're thinking, and um, so I, I feel good. I was happy that Gio got going. You know, he's a talented kid. He's fast. You know, and um, so it's just another weapon because I think we have a lot of them, and we need. We're going to need them all to just kind of, to just make sure we put pressure on these defenses we face, and um, so it's. Uh, I know he was all smiles after the game, you know, and he's getting, just gaining confidence. I mean, it is a different position than he's run. He blocked well, you know. I think he missed one or two blocks where it weren't as solid as we needed him. But uh, he's a very willing block, blocker, really strong, you know. So uh, he's he's slowly becoming a tight end, you know, which is which is fun to watch. You talk about the two guys that switch the other side of the ball. Uh, obviously, two positions position groups that you guys were looking for experience. So what did you see, especially in like Anton? Well, Anton, we've been thinking about him for a while. You know, he's just, he was the toughest receiver we had, you know, physically. Him and Beal used to go at it, you know, and uh, we'd always just say, I, and I don't think he had the, the top end speed to go to the league. And we'd always say, hey, if, if he's ever going to make it, he's going to make it on defense. I mean, he's just got great feet. He's long. Um, you know, but last year we needed him on offense. You know, as as Drake came in and then Jalen got done redshirting and Bird got here, it was just it got to the point where, um, you know, he was going to help us. You know what I mean? And uh, so, and he's doing a great job. He's literally getting better every day. You know, and it's been almost a month now. I think he's been doing it. And uh, and Harrison was a little bit buried on the depth chart. He's a, he's, he was a walk on, was a walk on. He's on now, you know, scholarship. But he's super fast. When we moved him over, we tried him at corner for a day or two, which I didn't think he was going to be. He's more of a not as loose as most corners are, uh, but he's fast and he'll hit you. You know, his first day back there in safety during training camp, I mean, he knocked the crap out of John Wasink, which you're not supposed to do, but he just forgot John, I mean and it was like the whole place went silent coach Dante Wright ran over and was like <laughs> said I'm gonna get fired over this you know I mean because you don't hit John you don't hit the starting quarterback well he did and I was kind of happy John took the hit and popped up and and every, all the defensive guys grabbed Harris like hey he's wearing red you know and uh, he's a tough kid I mean it took about three days and that tranquil was the one that stopped by my office and said Coach, he could be he could be special at safety, you know. And he's still learning. His first play of college football, you know, they uh, Michigan ran a double move on him for a touchdown. I mean, it was the it's a hard cover anyway, especially for your first ever play. It's like they knew we put him in the game for on play thirty eight or whatever it was, and he got beat on a double move. But uh, he's he's a little bit further behind because he's younger than than Anton, but uh, but his it, the upside is is huge for him. Wesley French was the other guy, too, hey. defensive tackle. I think he started at, on defense. He went defense, offense, back to defense. And he, um, man, he played great. I mean, he's playing a lot. He played, I think, like 40 plays, which this game was a lot, you know. Um, he, was, he was buried on the depth chart in the old line room. I and mean, he's a great athlete, big, pretty physical, you know. Got to work on his pad level, obviously. But, um I just want to see him play. I love that kid. I love his his temperament. I love, uh, I mean, he's all in on the team and he gives 100% effort all the time. And, uh, and he just wasn't going to crack into the lineup as, as an offensive lineman. We had, obviously, you know, Stephen Clark's situation happened and, and, uh, and he went over and he's playing because he wouldn't be playing if he was still on offense. So he's playing 30, 40, 50 plays a game. He's the happiest guy in, in the world. And, and Anton's fired up because he's playing a ton, and uh, and Harrison's playing more than he would have on offense, you know. So all those guys, you know, the defense welcomed them. And then they're out there after pra the first like week or two, like they're out there coaching them after practice. You know, I see uh, Juwan Dowell's out there with Anton, showing them this, that, and the other thing, and and it's been fun to watch those guys uh, grow. What's your kicker situation? Good. I mean, we I gave Petty a chance. 
and did a good job. You know, he missed the one extra point, but made the two field goals. Um, we need the competition. I mean, it's we need we need consistency out of that position. Uh, we haven't really lined anyone up for a long one yet. You know, uh, most of them have been chip shots, and um, you know, I knew in the you know going into this game, this was a game that I was hoping to get both of them kicks anyway. You know what I mean? No matter what happened, if we were, if we got ahead, I wanted to get uh, Petty a kick. You know, and uh, once Josh missed the first one, I decided that that was the moment to give <laughs> give give him a shot. You know, and they're competing this week. I don't know who the starter's going to be. Uh, we we have them kick all day, and then we kick in front of everybody, and we just chart to see which one's kicking better and which one. I, I really want someone to take the job and run with it, and no one has yet. And uh, so we got to continue to work on it. And Nick Nick's getting better. I mean, I definitely think that that uh, Josh has the kickoff. I mean, last, last week was a pretty impressive game, putting the ball right where we wanted to on the goal line. Um, so I definitely think that'll remain his job. But the rest is is competition. It's been been fun to watch. Coach, I uh, talked to the Georgia State play-by-play guy this morning, and uh, he was telling me, that, and I guess it's in the, in the notes, but uh, Georgia State gave up over 400 yards rushing. I think 11.7 yards a carry. Mm -hmm. And they started four new guys in the defensive secondary. Yeah. So as you're kind of looking at that, you know, it's like, gosh, you know, they're, they're vulnerable running against the run, but, you know, they've got all these new guys. Can you talk about how you're game planning for the yeah, I, I mean the reason they're vulnerable against the run is is those is those guys, those secondary guys. They're, they're good up front. It's just when you get a run, at least against Memphis, when you got a run past their front six or seven, the safeties weren't filling fast enough. You know, it gave them just enough space. So when they got through the line, it was a fifty yard run. But there was like a two yard run, a two yard run, an eighty yard run, a two yard run, a two yard run, an eighty yard run. You know, and I mean, they, they run almost exact defense that we run. It's almost identical. And your safety's got to be down. Like, Tranquil's down at the line of scrimmage. When he reads his run key, I mean, he's gone. So when, when you get through the line of scrimmage, kind of like Michigan, you know, we hope our safeties are standing right there at one or two yards, maybe three at the most, whereas uh, their safeties weren't filling fast enough, you know. I'm sure they're being coached that, you know, that they just the, – the new guys that were playing those positions – uh, anytime the running back got into the secondary, those probably should have been seven yard runs turned into 20, 30, 40, you know. And because um, I think they're pretty good up front. They're, they're front four, they'll get after you. They rush the passer well. Um, coverage wise, I think they're, they're, they're fairly decent. You know, they're very even, I think, with us, coverage wise. And, uh, but they're just the inexperience back there in stopping the run is, is huge. You know, that's why I said last year, like when we lost Tranquil, that was probably the one injury that hurt us the most because he is such an integral part of the run stopping game. When they do block everybody, he's your safety net. Hopefully it never gets to him, but when it does, that guy needs to be standing right there at three yards and make the tackle. I remember when Lewis Delmas used to make the tackle at one yard. I don't know how he got from 10 to one that fast, but he was in the line. When he read run, he became like a linebacker, you know? And that's where the separation in the layers of the defense uh, happened against Memphis is when they got the, those guys weren't you know their first time doing it you know and uh and I'll tell you in the re receiving game I mean they made some unbelievable catches I mean Memphis did I mean they, they were in coverage I didn't see anyone really open uh but they made contested catches and and did some really good things a lot of guys on field last Saturday uh two who didn't um Obi Jackson and Emmanuel Jackson mm -hmm. if you talk about um what they have to do to potentially see the field anytime soon. They have been suspended uh, due to violation indefinitely until due to violation of team rules. So they, that was about a month ago. So and when when I can talk about it more, I will. But they that's where they're at. Um, and statistically, Georgia State has one of the top receivers in the country, Penny Hart. Uh, what have you seen? What have you seen from him as far as uh, what he challenges some? Defense? He's such a great route runner, you know what I mean? Um, he's just like the total package as far as like, you, it's somebody you'd want on your team because he does everything. He blocks, he runs routes, he's fast. He's not like a blazer fast, but he's, he's a phenomenal route runner. Um, 
kind of like Keyshawn that way, you know, catches everything. Um, he just kind of seems to be the heart and soul of what they do. Like he'll make an unbelievable catch and that gets the whole team going. You know, he just has that, that it factor. It's almost like you can tell the guys look to him to do something to get them going. You know what I mean? It, sometimes it's a big block and sometimes it's just a catch that he breaks two tackles and turns it into a 10 yard gain instead of a three yard gain, you know? Uh, he's the one watching the game. You know, it was, it's fun to watch him play, you know? I like, I like the kid a lot. Any final questions for Coach? You are in a unique situation where you now will play in a stadium in back-to-back -back years that is hosted in Olympic Games and a World Series. There you go. Wow, you dug deep for that one. Okay. No, I, I am a um, – I'm kind of a baseball stadium junkie. I love – I grew up at Wrigley Field, and I – I remember when Coach Cuban let me leave spring ball, I think it was spring ball early, to go see Yankee Stadium before they they knocked it down and built a new one because I needed to check that box. We've gone to, been to Fenway. Uh, you know, in the summer times, normally we went to the, the, the Red Stadium in Cincinnati. Like, we go, we take the kids and we go, and I just think there's really cool when you go to an old baseball game and see the different places. So, obviously, watching – Glavin and Smoltz and, and Maddox. Like, I remember Turner Field. I've never stepped foot in that thing. I know it's going to look like a football stadium, but I, there's no way you can, you can bury Turner Field. There's, there's going to be things. Like, I'm, I'm looking forward to walking, whether it's underneath and they're like skinny hallways. Like, I imagine it being concrete hallways, you know. Uh, I'm excited about that. I don't know if our kids know anything about <laughs> that. You know, they probably don't even care. Uh, I'm fired up as a, as a guy who watched the Braves do it. Gosh, they had such a run, you know. So I, th I think me and the coaches think it's really cool and unique. And, um, and I don't know if our players, if it matters to them to one, one bit, you know. Um, yeah. So that, it is kind of cool, though. It, it, it'll be a unique thing, you know. The only other thing I wanted to cover with you guys is uh, the is the – AJ Reed situation. He will. Uh, the plan right now is that he'll be here in January. Drop ads over, so we'll, we can talk more about it. But it's going good. We're just past first semester, and on to the plan is in January he'll be here. We'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. First uh, year, you know, playing on the team. Obviously, you had a red shirt last year. Just talk a little bit about kind of finding your role on the team and making an impact. Um, yeah, I red shirted last year. I got a lot of learning experience behind uh, Spillane and Sante Brown and Kayla Bailey, just watching them play, learning the tempo of the game and, you know, how, you know, just how the tempo of the game, how your hair's got to be on fire all the time and just, you know, the mentality you got to have on the field. You just got to be always wired. And so that's really the biggest thing from the jump from, you know, high school to college, just, just learning the mentality of how you have to play. Is it hard to pull back on that, too? I saw a coach when I walked in saying, you know, we're supposed to tackle a guy in practice. And yeah, we try to uh, lay off each other. We try to stay up in practice. So, like, sometimes, you know, you just, you're just feeling it, really, and then you make a tackle. But, you know, we, we got to take care of our teammates. So we try not to hit each other in practice. We, but we still get after it. You like to play with an edge, obviously. I mean, I think Wasik said you're probably one of the hardest hitters on the team. So, I mean, is that – you brought that to college. I mean, we, we obviously have been doing this since you were little, but uh, what did you think, like, first time you made a big hit in college? Um, it just felt really good because it's like going into the game. Maybe you're, like, a little nervous, and then you finally play, and it's like – it's just like what you've been doing your whole life. And so it's like you just go out there and do the same things you've been doing. So it feels really good to go out there and hit. And, and you got to play it under control, obviously, too. And, and with like the rules we have now, especially with targeting, um, I, how much of that is just like uh, muscle memory? And how much, like, how much do you guys even just go over kind of stuff to protect players? Uh, we do it. Literally every day we practice, so we do tackling drills to make sure that we're tackling with proper form. So if you tackle with proper form, you know, you won't lead with your helmet. You know, your, your face is up, and we teach to, you know, put your head across the ball. So when you put your head across the ball, you, don't, you won't stand any chance of hitting anybody helmet to helmet, and you're safe. Can you talk about um, playing with Drake Spears and Alex Grace and our linebacking core? Uh, although it's all new in terms of starters from last year, 
it seems to be a lot faster. But can you talk about playing with those guys that come and screw you guys up? Yeah, Drake Spears and Alex Grace, those are two really phenomenal athletes. So, like, it's fun to play with those guys and see those guys fly around. And, you know, they're always, you know, the key, we, we do want to play fast. So you can play faster if you know what you're doing. So the, what we do is we study our film all the time. We always get together. You, we just do whatever we can. So the mental comes naturally. So when we're out on the field, we can play faster and we can run to the ball. And we know what we're doing because when you're confident in what you're doing, it makes you play faster. I understand that you grew up in Florida, uh, a long way from Kalamazoo. Um, what, can you talk about your recruiting process and uh, what brought you to Western? Well, I was, um, it was in the spring before my senior year, and I was being, that's when I first started getting recruited by Western Michigan. And it was uh, Ed Pinkham, who's not here anymore. He, he started recruiting me, so he came down to Florida in the spring, and he was recruiting me. And throughout the whole season, they were really consistent with their recruiting more than any other school was. And so, like, the end of my season comes around and thinking about colleges in Western Michigan had a phenomenal year, and they were just consistent throughout the whole time. So I came up here on the visit, and I really enjoyed it, and it was just a place that I knew I could spend four or five years at. Uh, and you mentioned, uh, you know, how much bigger of a role you're playing this year, obviously, not redshirting. Uh, what were some things that you really focused on uh, on the field as well as off of it to be ready to have a significant role this year? Um, I just focused on learning the playbook because, you know, as a linebacker, you have to know what other people are doing. You can't just know what you're doing because you got to make calls and stuff like that. So that was really the biggest thing was just getting, learning the playbook, getting the playbook down, and also taking care of your body more because, you know, it's a different level of physicality. So you really got to take care of your body and you really got to do the things off the field like, you know, cold tubs and the massages that they provide for us. You really got to take advantage of that stuff to keep your body healthy for the season. Last last uh, year, I think, was probably the first winter. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was snow and all that. Yeah. Can you just talk, talk about, number one, what you're majoring in, and number two, about, you know, how, how life has been in Kalamazoo and Alaska, being a student. More than that. Um, my major is sales and business marketing, and Kalamazoo's been really good. You know, it's like, it's a really fun city, and, you know, the people, are really behind the football team. So it's like you got a, like a lot of support from the community and it's been really fun. And yeah, the winter was, um, it was unlike anything I've, it was my first time seeing snow actually. And it was like really cool. Not, it was really cool for like a small period of time. And then it's just like, you know, walking to class and that it's like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't really last that long, but it was really cool to see snow for the first time. What, what do you expect from Georgia State? Um, I expect the physical team. They're a really good team. I, th I think it's really it's going to be an evenly matched game. They got a very athletic quarterback, so that's going to be something. That's going to be a challenge. And you know, they're running backs. They're really physical. They like to get downhill, and they bring the uh, they the, they like to bring the hit. So we'll have to really be on it. What is you know? It was a game that obviously you guys were expected to win on Saturday. But what does sixty-eight nothing do for the confidence of the team? Um. I think it just makes the team feel, just feels good, you know, to first of all, get the first win of the season. And just knowing, because even with any game, there's so much stuff that you can improve on. So even in that win, there was so much stuff we could improve on. And we learned so much about ourselves and what we can do better. So I think that was a big part of it. How important was it to get the shutout? Um, it felt pretty good to get the shutout. Um, you know, the. We obviously didn't let them get much going, but you know, even when the twos came in, they they know their stuff, and so like they they were gap sound and they played their responsibilities. So it was good to see those young guys go out there and not only play for the first time, but execute the stuff that we practice.